Good to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, God has truly blessed us. Give us a beautiful day to praise Him and to worship Him. I appreciate each and every one of you being here today. Uh, those that were here at Sunday school, I shared with you that Brother Seth Stacy, our music minister, for those of you that don't know, about seven, six, seven weeks ago, he was in an automobile accident. And, uh, you know, just by the grace of God that he lived through that, that he had broke all about all of his ribs on the left side and the center of his sternum there, his collarbone, his shoulder, and had to have surgery on it, punctured a thong, and he's been having a slow recovery. Well, this morning, he had to go to the emergency room at the VA hospital uh, yesterday, and Friday he got real dizzy and, uh, and nauseous and uh, just thought something was going on in his head. So when I talked to him before church, they had done a CT scan on his head and I run back there to check my phone he sent me a text message that the CT scan checked out okay so we thank God for a good report on the CT scan but uh, maybe it's vertigo that's going on with him but we just pray for him today that this uh, dizziness lightheaded swimming headedness will go away and that he'll make a, a full recovery he goes back to his trauma doctor on October 11th I think that's Thursday so we pray he gets a good report but more than just the good reports from the doctors you're your best doctor you know when you feel good and you know when you don't feel good and I just pray that he'll get to feeling good and be able to be back with us and I'll take these needs to God today in prayer those that are able Heavenly Father we love you and God we thank you for your mercy your grace your love God Father we thank you for an opportunity God to come and assemble together in the house of the Lord and Father Lord you've seen the needs Father God Lord you see Father God our sister God Lord Father that she may be in the valley of the shadow of death but Father you can still work a miracle for her God you're a miracle working God and Lord I just pray your virtue would flow and you would touch her God Lord you see this sister father god lord that we've sent the prayer cloth into father i'm believing father god that you're going to touch her god and give her strength father bring healing lord unto her body lord brother stacy this morning god as he's at the va hospital lord we just pray father god that you would touch him god lord this swinging this father god going on in his head lord the doctors may not know exactly what's causing it but god all you have to do is speak into him right now and father god he can be made whole and lord father god for the unspoken requests that are here today the Baysmore family God touch them minister to them and Father Lord I just pray God that your glory would fill this tabernacle Lord you know our needs even before we ask but Father you said seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and Lord that you'll add all these things unto us and Father we're believing Father Lord that you're going to touch us you're going to minister in this house today and God let us give you the highest of praise in all that we do and God will give you all glory and all honor in Jesus Jesus' name we ask. Amen and amen.
There's coming the day, saints of God, and we're going to fly away. We're going to take that heavenly fly. You can be seated if you're able to. we got to be living for Him. we got to be ready to meet Him because there's going to be a meeting in the air one day, and I just want to be there. I want to hear Him say, Well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. You know what? There's none of us here any good. We're no good. But by the grace of God, we're good. But what we can be is faithful. We can be faithful unto Him because He's been faithful unto you. Whether you realize it or not, God has been faithful. There's been times in our life where we felt like we was walking through the valley. We felt we were all alone. But I promise you, God was faithful unto you in that very hour. For He promised us He would never leave us. He would never forsake us. He would stay closer than a brother. And we've got that promise today. A few announcements let me remind you of tonight. After the evening service, we'll be having a business meeting. So if you attend this church, you love this church, you're faithful to this church, be here tonight after the altar service. Uh, I have an open book, and I want you to see where we stand and the direction we're going in. So be here tonight in that business meeting if you're able. We've got a church yard sale coming up. And uh, these ladies and men, they've been working hard around here making preparation for this thing. And it just gets bigger and bigger every day. And I appreciate all of the hard work and all the effort that's went into that. That's going to be October the 20th. Is that, am I correct in that date? October the 20th at church yard sale. I guess it'll start around 8 o'clock in the morning. So, uh, so be here for that yard sale. Invite people to come. And uh, if you can't do nothing else, get a piece of poster board, stick it up down there on the floor, like tie a balloon to it, and they'll come. We've already proved that to be faithful. So uh, church yard sale October the 20th. Remember that. You know what? We're getting on the time of the year that uh, the leaves are starting to turn, and God's going to take out his paintbrush and paint these beautiful mountains. And let's take advantage of that to tell everybody what God has done and what God hath created. Because you know what? You're blessed. You're blessed to be in western North Carolina or Tennessee or North Georgia this time of the year because there's no better place on earth to be, in my opinion, than right here where we're at, especially right here in Murphy. Somebody
turn with me to the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John chapter number 9. When you find your place in the Gospel of John chapter number 9, I'll ask those that are able to stand on the reading of the Word of God. I heard the story one time how a evangelist, a church planner, missionary, whatever title you wanted to give him, was working in New York City. How he was going through around the streets in Central Park and he seen this homeless man and he gave him a copy of the New Testament. Years later, that pastor was pastoring there in New York City and a fine man come into the church and at the end of the service, he looked at the preacher and he said, you don't remember me, do you? And the preacher said, no, sir, I'm sorry, but I don't remember you. He said, you remember the homeless man that you give the copy of the New Testament unto? And he said, yeah, I do remember that man. He said, well, I'm that man. He said, I want to tell you that he said... For years, I would take a page out of that New Testament and I would roll my joint in it. He said, I smoked Matthew. I smoked Mark. I smoked Luke. But he said, Preacher John smoked me. And I give my heart and soul to Jesus Christ. And there he was in the house of the Lord. I wish John smoked somebody today. Amen. John chapter number 9, verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents. Praise God. Could Jesus say that about you today? Neither hath this man sinned. Could Jesus say that about your parents? Neither hath his parents. But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can work. And so long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, and he made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sin. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the Word of God, Father, this morning. I thank you, Lord, for the people of God that's gathered in your house today. And God, I thank you for your presence, God, that I feel, Father, right now. I ask, Lord God, that you would anoint me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet, Father, to preach this gospel. And Father God, that you would anoint ears, that they would hear the word of God. Anoint hearts, Father God, that they would receive. And anoint in a body, God, that it would take action, Father, on what you've placed inside of them. And God will give you all glory and honor for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated here this morning. As we look into chapter 9 of the Gospel of John, we see, and it said, and as Jesus passed by. Well, if you look back to chapter number 8, verse 59, listen to what the Word of God said. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Jesus was at the temple of God in Jerusalem, Disputed with the Jews. It was not a good feeling church service going on that morning. Matter of fact, it was a place where there was a lot of tension. I don't know about you, but I don't like tension. And if there's a tension in a place, I tend to try to find another place to go if I can. I don't like to be around it. Sometimes you have to have tension. Sometimes you got to confront it. Sometimes you got to deal with it. But if you can avoid it at all costs, my philosophy most of the time, the way I've lived my life, is try to avoid that tension if I can. 
But Jesus was in the temple. He was teaching. The Jews were disputing with him. He was answering them back the words of truth. And the Word of God said they took up stones to stone him. Now, I don't know if anybody has ever had a rock through at it. I don't know if I've ever had a rock through at me. But I guess confession is good for the soul. I have to a rock at somebody. I didn't have ill will intended when I threw that rock, Sister Shirley. I was hiding. I was just a kid. And my cousin was walking down through there and I thought, I'm going to scare her. I'm going to get me some rocks and I'm going to throw them behind her and she's going to hear that rock hit and she's going to turn around and she ain't going to see nobody. Then I'm going to watch her take off running because she's going to be scared. I throw the rock. She turned and looked. She heard the racket. There was nobody there. She started walking. I threw another rock. And then I got a hold of a curveball rock. And I threw that thing and it goes, and it hit her. I thought, oh no. I just hit her. And she stood there crying, turning around looking, couldn't see nobody. And immediately the flesh told me to hide because grandma gonna whoop you. And when grandma gets done with you, her mama's gonna whoop you. And when her mama gets done with you, your mom and daddy's gonna whoop you and you're gonna be in trouble. But I couldn't hide no longer. I had to come out and said, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to scare you I didn't mean for that rock to curve and hit you. Would you forgive me? You know she found it in her heart to forgive me. She didn't even tell on me, Roger. I should have just whooped myself. Because I deserved one. Jesus didn't deserve one, but they took up rocks to throw at Him. They were going to stone Him right in the temple. But Jesus hid Himself he slipped away from them where they couldn't throw the rocks at him and he passed by all the angry mob that was ready to stone him. And when he got away from them and got with his disciples, here said a blind man. And I thought to myself, so many churches across this world today, they got people ready to throw rocks and in the midst of it, there's people sitting there needing a touch from Almighty God. It's time we throw the rocks down and got some love. Amen. What about that woman caught in adultery? The Word of God said that she was caught in the very act. And they brought her and threw her at the feet of Jesus Christ and said, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. The law of Moses said for us to stone her. But what say? you. First thing I was thinking of, where's the man? She was caught in the very act. Where was the partner? They forgot about him. And Jesus bent down and began to write in the sand. Now we all speculate what he wrote in the sand. Many suppose that he went to the eldest of them that was ready to stone her and started writing his sins down. Reading his book of all he had done in his past. And one by one, they threw the stones down because he told them he, without sin, cast the first stone. They dropped their rocks and they left. And Jesus said, Woman, where are thine accusers? And she said, Lord, I have none. He said, Then neither do I accuse thee, but go and sin no more. You know what it was, Luke? It was mercy. It was mercy followed by grace. Saints of God, instead of casting stones, we need to cast mercy. And when mercy gets followed by grace, salvation will come and a life will change. And it will make a difference in somebody's life. Hear the blind man said, Jesus is running from an angry mob and he passes by him. And the disciples say, who did sin, this man or his parents? That he was born blind. Listen. Birth defects happen. And it's a tragedy. There's sometimes in this world today children are born addicted to heroin. Addicted to methamphetamine. Addicted to alcohol. Because of the actions of a mother when she was carrying that baby. That baby couldn't help that. That baby couldn't ask for that. But this man was born blind. 
And the disciples just assumed he'd done something wrong. The reason he was blind. The disciples assumed that his parents had been bad parents. They had sinned against God and therefore God was taking it out on the children. May I tell you, God will chastise his children. But God ain't took nothing out on you or your kids. God has done you nothing but good. Nothing but good. Because there is a judgment day coming. But we're not in that judgment day yet. We're in mercy right now. We're in grace right now. Neither hath this man sinned for his parents. But that the works of God could be made manifest in him. In other words, this man was born blind just for the very reason that God knew one day Jesus would be at the temple and a miracle could take place. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people walking around today with conditions in their body. They don't know why they've got that in condition in their body, but God knows exactly why because there's an appointed day, there's an appointed time where God's going to do something great in their life and He's going to get the glory. And that's what this day was. And He spat on the ground and he made spittle. The kids anymore make mud pies. Anymore they got Xbox, Nintendo, and, and PlayStation and all these things. When we were kids, we played with lizards in the creek. We made mud pies. I remember getting some of Grandma's pie tins and going out to the branch and making me a good chocolate pie. I remember even slipping it on the table wanting to know if somebody would take a bite of my mud pie. And all that happened was Grandma found out I'd stole her little pie tin. She didn't like it too well, Luke. So that meant she had to go back to the grocery store, Sister Mary, and get another one. Especially then with that gray and cracker crust still. Mm -hmm. They hold a lot better when they got cream and cheese in there and cherries on top than mud in them. He made mud. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man. Why did he do it, Pastor? Didn't God form us from the dust of the earth? He got down and he formed Adam out of the dust of the earth. He carved out the eyeballs. He put on the eyelashes on it. He made everything. And he was making it perfect under this man. Then he said to him, Go to the pool of Siloam, which by interpretation is sin, and wash. And the man went to the pool. Now he was blind, so in order to get to the pool, Roger, he had to have somebody lead him there. Somebody had to take him to the pool. They got to the pool and he washed. And the Word of God said he came seeing. That meant he turned to come back to where Jesus was, but this time he was seeing. Could you imagine being blind and seeing for the first time? Occasionally my wife shows me things on the internet where these kids can't see and all of a sudden the doctors make a set of glasses and put on that baby and all of a sudden they can see. And their faces goes, you know, it's Beautiful, most wonderful thing in the world. And a baby that's been deaf and all of a sudden the doctors put something in their ears where they can hear their mother's voice and to see them children's reaction. Man, it's wonderful. Good stuff. This man been born blind, but all of a sudden he's seeing. I just have to believe the pool of Siloam was a beautiful place. Did you catch that? I don't think God sent him to the dump to wash his eyes out. God sent him to a place full of beauty. That way when he washed that clay, the first thing he saw was all the beautiful things around about him. And he come back looking for Jesus. So what can we determine right here? This man did not know what Jesus looked like. He had never seen him. Have you ever seen him, Sister Olena? I ain't ever seen him. 
But praise God, one day I'm going to get to see him. They asked him when his neighbors come, said, it's not this he that was born blind? And some said, no, it's not him, but he looks like him. But Brother Bill, he come up and said, hey, I'm him. I am the one that was born blind. Well, how come you see? Well, this man named Jesus spat on the ground and made spittle, put it on my eyes, told me to go to the pool of Siloam and wash, and now I see. So he knew his name. He had never seen the man, but he knew his name. There's no other name I'd rather know today than that name of Jesus. I've been humming that little chorus this morning. How beautiful. The name of Jesus. It's a beautiful name. That name of Jesus. Diane, I've never looked upon him. I don't know if the artist's rendition is correct or not. I've never seen him. But I've heard his name. Not only did he know his name, he heard his voice. Because he said, you go and you wash. Brother Harold, not only did he hear the voice, he was obedient. Under that voice. Thanks be to God one day. My parents took me to the house of the Lord. My God, I heard about that name of a name called Jesus. I'd never seen Him. I'd only heard about His name. i never heard His voice. But one day, praise God down in my soul, I heard Him call my name. I heard Him speak to me. And I knew it was Jesus talking to me. I didn't see Him, but I believed upon what He was telling me. I was obedient unto Him. I repented of my sins, and I accepted Him as my Savior. And one day I'm going to see him. They asked him, said, well, who is he? His name is Jesus, but I know not who he is. He's never seen him. Well, what is he? Well, he's got to be a prophet. He's got to be a man of God. And then all the troublemakers in the temple got stirred up again. Well, this man can't be of God. It's the Sabbath day. How dare him heal somebody on church the one day? My goodness, I want to see people heal on church the one day. I want to see people touched on Sunday. I don't care if it's on Saturday. I want to see them touched on Saturday. If I go to the hospital and pray with them on Monday, Brother Jerry, I want God to show up and God touch them on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It don't matter. But to them, God can't do things on the Sabbath. He couldn't heal. I guarantee you them fellas went home and eat something. And I just wonder really how many of them Pharisees actually prepared it on Friday night. They probably went home and told the wife to start cooking. I'm hungry. She'd have been a good woman. She'd said, feed for yourself. <laughs> I'd throw that in Never seen him, but he knew his name. He had heard of him because he was in the temple. He believed upon him and he obeyed him. And now he was testifying on his behalf. My God. Come on and look what the Lord has done. I look around here this morning and I see testimonies on every pew. Roger said, go take some names off that cross because they're here today. Praise God. I see testimonies on every pew. We can believe in God today. I've never seen Him, but I still believe. I'll tell you, He is the Christ. He is the Son of the living God. He can change your life. If you believe in Him and hear His voice, be obedient to that voice. They said, bring His parents here. They drug his mom and dad. Is this your son? 
That's my son. That's my son. Was he born blind? Yep. He was born blind. Well, how come he's seeing? Well, he's of age. Won't you ask him? I first read out, I thought, what cowards? There your boy is blind. And you won't even defend your son at seeing you for the very first time. That son had boldness. He said, I told you, the man named Jesus touched me. And he's got to be of God. For if he wasn't, I'd still be blind. But I'm not blind no more. He defended the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sometimes God will put you to the test. Will you defend the gospel of Jesus Christ? I believe as we walk in this world every day, we're getting put to the test. Are we defending the gospel? Of Jesus Christ. Every day I gotta defend that gospel. Every day I gotta testify to the truth of that gospel. I had a message today and this morning, and it said, if God don't fix this problem, I don't know that I could ever believe in God anymore. I text them back, call me. They call me. I said, listen, God didn't cause this problem. Man caused this problem. And God's still God. And God will work it out if man's willing. But if man is not willing, God's not going to do nothing. But this morning, if you're here and you're willing to let God touch you, God will touch you. If you've got a need in your life and you're willing to turn that thing over to God, God will supply that need. But you've got to be willing to let God. That blind man was willing. He let God. He defended God. Now he was walking about. And Brother Jerry, right before his eyes was the man named Jesus. He knew him not. But what did Jesus say unto him? He said, I am He. I am He. You know what He did? He called Him Lord. <laughs> Is He your Lord today? To many people, He's their Savior today. Is He your Savior today? He's my Savior. Without Him, I'm lost and undone without God. But today I have a Savior. His name is Jesus. I got a coming King today. His name is Jesus. But I tell you who else I've got. I've got a Lord today. He's Lord of my life. He's my everything. To that blind man, Jesus was everything. When his parents wouldn't stand by his side, Jesus was by his side. Sometimes we get in situations in our life where our family don't even stand by us. And you know what? When your family don't stand by you, it hurts. I can't promise you that your family will always be by your side. But what I can promise you today, the Lord will be right there by your side. He'll stand with you just as He stood by that blind man. That blind man believed. He went away seeing. He went away with eternal life. But in order for us to do that today, we've got to believe upon a man in whom we've never saw. We've got to hear His voice. And we've got to be obedient. And then we've got to testify of Him. Stand for Him. And God will be right there with you.
Stand with me all over this house, Heavenly Father. You see those that are gathered in this house today. God, I don't know the needs, Father, that's on every heart. But God, this I do know. We're all living in this world. And because all of us are in this world, every single person here has a need today. God, some needs may be greater than others. But the greatest need is if we don't know Jesus is our Savior, you've come to seek and to save that one that is lost. With every head bowed and eye closed, I call unto you this morning. You've never seen Him. I've never seen Him. But you've heard His voice. You've heard Him knocking on your heart's door. Will you believe upon Him? Will you let Jesus come in and touch your soul today? If you'll invite Him, He'll come in. He'll forgive you of your sin. He'll remove it far from you. Remember it no more. If you'll just let God touch you today. Let Jesus come in. You're here and you say, Pastor, I need the Lord to touch my life. But you just lift your hand. Just lift your hand to God. God will touch you. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I'm not blind. Pastor, I don't need spittle put on my eyes. But Pastor, I do have an infirmity in this body. And I know that He's the potter. And I'm the clay. And I need Him to do a work in my body. I need Him to heal me. I need Him to touch me. I've not sinned. But I've got sickness and I need God to heal my body. If that's you, just lift your hand to God. God sees His hands. If you lifted your hand and you believe that God's able to touch your body, if you'll step out by faith and come and stand around this altar, I believe God will be with you here. We'll anoint you with oil. We'll pray the prayer of faith over you. And I believe God can touch you. You need prayer. This altar's open. Anyone that desires, you can come and pray. We'll pray for you this morning. Whatever you want.